one round with it. Got it nearer that side, nearer the edge of the shaft. Well, it's going to be dependent. It's jammed in it on Right, now swing that round, lad. I'll pull that wire. Dependent on which of these we're taking out, where you want to be in the shaft. Yeah. Well, you want to be. I think, sort of I think that one usually comes up a bit further yeah, forward. Yeah, it's where we're at the time. Isn't it? Are we sure we're moving it? Just you yours is okay. Let me, let me move this. If anything, I think this one wants to move it further around with you. Oh, it's slightly. Like How are we doing there, John? We're not looking too bad there. We've got, we've got a, with this one, we've not got the point in the ground, it's just resting on the edge. Well, the ropes will hold it together, not oh, just yeah. to frighten with that. It's just where, where we're going to plumb down there, that point. She had, she had a form I had to pick up when I picked it up. I know the way in. <laughs> Take it a bit faster, Ian. Sorry, uh, I'll wait a bit quicker. 
Yeah, a little bit quicker. Uh, this, this bell here is part of the mammoth system. Uh, originally it used to have two uh, pipes coming down the shaft from a water tank 90 feet above the shaft top. The water drew air with it and as the air and the water landed in this drum it would discharge the air into the top half of the drum uh, and the water would be vented out of this drum back up to the um, ramp gill level and then it would come back down again uh, into the into brewery shaft bottom and it would power pelt wheels to power uh, air driven machinery. Brewery shaft is down is 320 feet deep from the collar to the bottom where I'm standing now. Now this is the control system for the compressed air that was run throughout the mine complex. There used to be originally a staking just above my head where I'm standing, uh, so that the guy could control uh, the flow of air throughout the mine. Right, you can take her up now. Over. We're looking now back at the bottom of brewery shaft. Here we see some of the control valve for controlling the flow of the water from the bottom of the shaft or from the large tank previously mentioned into the <coughs> Pelton wheel system, of which there were two. Uh, and one pelt wheel driven electrical generator. Uh, you can see at the bottom here we have all the stagings down the shaft to collapse and fill the bottom of the shaft completely. Right. This, this is the compressed air pipeline coming out of the, of the bell itself. It, as you can see here, it is, it's a four inch pipe but reduced here to an inch pipe which would control the flow of air to the rock drills. At the bottom here, we have the large diameter pipe, about 15 inch diameter pipe, that brought the water down into the bottom of the receiving bell. All right, ready? Semicircular boxes that you can see are the covers for the large pelt wheel in the engine room, which we'll see later. The reason the line on the side here was in the 1960s somebody was removing the scrap. This thing we're looking at here is the original windings around the electric cable that powered the first lighting in the country in Nenthead Village in Cumbria. And we see also the continuation of the compressed air pipes again. This is the continuation of the water system. As you can see we have a valve with the large pipe coming up. What this actually does, we have a three foot diameter pelt wheel here which powered uh, a broom and wave compressor. Uh, there was also a SRAM compressor in this place, but how it worked was that the, the water comes into the pelt wheel through a very fine jet, which can be adjusted either with a fast flow or a slow flow, and it turned the wheel around, which in turn turned the compressor. This plant operated at very little cost. Once the initial installation was paid, it cost nothing to run it because the water was free off the fell side. Connected by a drive shaft, and we'll see that we have a large gearbox housing. Unfortunately, while the housing is complete, the gears have gone from inside this box. The chamber that we're standing in is some 15 feet high and about 80 foot long, with a curved roof and stone.
This was the engine bed for the Broom and Wave compressor. As you can see, it's not here anymore, but we have the remains of the crankshaft with the flywheel on the end. On the other side here, as the water came out of the pelton wheel, it came down a wooden trough, went out through this opening here and back into the Nemp Force level. who would look after the machinery here. As you can see, still a lot of tools, nuts and bolts, old couplings for the compressed air, tins, springs, everything is still here as it was left. This was the electrical generator. It was a Lemaire and made in Belgium. As you can see, it was water powered. Instead of one powder, we have two. One's in the cover, the other one you can actually see. We have two incoming water pipes, this one here, this one here. The idea was, with the governors on the top of the machine, when the pressure of water got too great and was too fast, it would open this governor up, and the governor would shut the machine off by the use of this lever here. And this powered the first public lighting in the country. You can see here again the Pelton wheels, as originally I said it would be in a cover like this one, but once the water was spent it would go down this slot here and come out by this drainage canal here, and would again would go off down the next force level where it came out in Alston, 4.5 miles away. Those the original tails of that one. Yeah, the behind me the tail, yeah. Right. We'd have a water pressure gauge on here so they could tell the pressure of the water on the wheels where that's disappeared. This is a concrete line section of the level. And one of the reasons for this was we're directly on Shawfoot Cross Vein, which comes under the valley from Dow Gang. As, we'll, as you'll see later on, we're passing to another chamber with a water wheel. Uh, the idea of the water wheel was to pump the water out from below this level we're in, 60 feet below in fact. So they built this concrete dam to stop the water percolating into the workings down <coughs> below. This timber that you can see here, or the remains of it, was once a box that held the balance box for the water wheel to stop it running out of control. Depending on the load put on the water wheel, uh, you would load more rocks into the balance box so that it counterbalanced the weight of water that would get from the, around the shaft. This is a 16 foot overshot diameter water wheel, as you can see, at two foot breadth. Uh, the water for this came down a shaft, which you can see in the far route, uh, from the far side of the river Nen, uh, and was fed by Galgang Dam, or reservoir. See here the chain that wound the bucket up and down the shaft, and we have the winding wheel there, which originally was positioned across the top of the shaft. And this is the huge beam which carried the gearing wheels, which will be collect connected to this wheel here. As you can see the wheel is well worn, in fact it's turned them all to a point.
just hear some of the wrong up there, and then we'll, I'll get it from here, right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Then, as you can see, originally it was starting up in Alston at nine foot square. But unfortunately, they met the time bottom limestone down by height. Uh, and so, because it was so hard and so expensive to drive in, they originally finished it off in, in this particular size, which is roughly about seven foot by three foot. About a hundred yards down the passage is a big metal grill, which stops rubbish and waste rock going down the m level and causing blockages. But at the moment, about 200 yards down, there is a blockage which is holding back the water and is impassable. So this is basically the start of the journey, which goes to 4.5 miles and comes out almost in Alston Town Centre. Shout it on the wheels. Some sort of control valve for the water pressure. Well, you know what I'm saying? Those comments. Seems to me that. Seems to me that. Yeah. Come on. Oh, it's not supposed to pass just down the panel. Then you're being high. This is to control the flow of water because of the great pressure. This is a valve that goes up and down and compresses this spring to control the flow of water through the valve. Hmm. Look, it's coming in this way. Yeah, well, it is, but that's how we put it back on. Keep watching the wall. Uh, yeah, well, 
sometimes you can just, if you touch your foot gently against the wall, it'll stop you spinning. Yeah, that's you, why I spin. Yeah, you, you start again, yeah. but you know, you just do that to just stop you spinning. Well, I just spin the other way, but I don't think you can do it. Yeah, they're better up than spinning. Sorry, you're doing the wall. Yeah, go on. Yes, we have it.